Thanks both for joining me on Upfront. Uh, Claire Short, does the Chilcot report confirm, does it validate what you've been saying about Tony Blair and the Iraq war over the past decade? Yes, the report is written in very polite language, as you'd expect from a sort of Whitehall establishment origin person. But it's a devastating critique, and it upholds all the criticisms that the critics have made, from exaggerating the intelligence to pretend that there was um, an imminent threat, concocting the legal advice in an improper way, rushing to war before the diplomatic solutions had been exhausted, so it might have been possible to allow Blix to go on. There was no imminent threat. Um, and on and on it goes. Everything that the critics are not preparing properly for afterwards. You, you say everything, and it, and it is a devastating report, no doubt about that. You say everything, but it doesn't say explicitly, does it, that Blair lied or misled uh, Parliament or the public, which is something you've said in the past. Do you still believe uh, Tony Blair misled the people, misled you, that he lied about the threat from Iraq? Absolutely. And, you know, Blair's response has all been to say, I'm very, very, very sorry, but I would do it all exactly the same again. So I don't know what exactly he's supposed to be sorry for. But, and he said, and he says, I didn't deceive anyone. Well, if you add up all the things it says that he exaggerated or didn't, wasn't frank about and, for example, blaming the French and saying that meant they couldn't get a second resolution because Chirac had said um, he would veto anything. When he didn't, he said, not now. I mean, these are deceits, but it's polite language, so they haven't used the word deceit. And now Blair and his entourage are saying, oh, he really was sincere, uh, he didn't deceive okay. or manipulate well, anyone. Well, he did. I think okay. he was sincere in believing he should go with Bush. But, but, but deceit but is the word you're deceive. using. There's John, no question. Let me ask John McTernan. Uh, deceit there. They may not, he may not have used the word deceit, uh, Sir John Chilcott, in his report, but the evidence in his report is clear that he did mislead. He was involved in deception, Claire Short says. No, he says exactly the opposite, doesn't he? He says that um, Tony Blair presented the intelligence as it was presented to him. He didn't lie to Parliament. Um, in fact, he's clear. No, he doesn't say that. That is not true. That is not true. That's not what the report says. It's cleared, cleared of all the things. Cleared of all the things that have just been said. No, it's, he's, cle he's cleared of all of those things that Claire has just asserted. And she's having to really stretch the definition of deceit to almost mean tell the truth to I accuse invite Tony to read of the um, telling the truth. He tell, was a completely read straight, the summary. Completely, Tony was completely straightforward earlier this week on Wednesday when the report came out. Really clear about this. He um, uh, he said. He's taken responsibility for mistakes that weren't his, the mistakes of the military, the mistakes of the security services. He was prime minister. He takes responsibility for them, which I think is a leadership thing to do. And then he's also said uh, that uh, he cannot, and he said this consistently, he cannot regret the fact that Saddam Hussein is no longer in charge uh, of Iraq. And I think that's that, that is true. We cannot regret the fact that a genocidal dictator, genocidal fascist dictator, uh, was removed from power in Iraq. Tony Blair says, uh, and you're agreeing with him, that he's exonerated on the specific charge of lying. And we can have a, a pedantic def uh, argument about, you know, what is the definition of yeah. lying. But on pretty much everything else, John, uh, the failure to exhaust diplomatic options, Iraq not being an imminent threat, the lack of post-war planning, Chilcot is, you would admit, pretty damning. Your former boss is not going to live this down, is he? It's basically his political epitaph. Of course, it's not his political epitaph. Um, the, it's, it's absolutely clear uh, that there are many, many things about Tony Blair's uh, contribution to, the, to, to Britain, to Europe, uh, and to the world when he's prime minister, which will help to define how he's seen by history. But, however, let's go to the, let's go to the report. Let's be clear about the report. Um, there are occasions when Sir John Tilcott was making a statement yesterday when I'd pretty well say he was sexing up his executive summary. He, um, he, he interposed his judgment with that of the Prime Minister. It was clear that there had been 17 UN Security Council resolutions, that the way to try to bring this to a head was to give a deadline uh, for Saddam Hussein. There was a deadline. He had a month to actually cooperate just with the UN Just a minute. This won't do. We're supposed to be discussing half, the Chilcot three, report. Three and, now we're getting had, a justification and a half, of the war. Three, it's nothing John, three and a half, three three and a half like months John, it does sound that. like you're trying to re-prosecute an argument that a seven-year, 2.6 million report has now pretty much put to bed. Military action might have been necessary at some it point, put it to but bed. there was no imminent threat no. from Saddam. The strategy of containment could have been adopted. The government failed in its stated objectives. That, that, 
That is the opinion. That is purely the opinion. So you reject purely the, the Chilcot report? Of Sir John Sil Chilcot. In hindsight, I, re I, re I reject the I reject. It's not just judgment. John Chilcot, it's he the made whole a judgment. committee. He, was, he made a judgment. Sir John Chilcot made a judgment about what he would have done or what could have been done in terms of military options and peaceful options. It's not just Tony him. Tony Blair it's made the a different judgment. The cabinet committee. made a different it's judgment. It's not just him. And they, it's, it is Sir John. No, Sir John no, that's Chilcott's not true statement either. The cabinet was a didn't clear interposition. Properly. Was a clear interposition oh. of himself. He substitutes his judgment for Tony Blair's judgment. Okay, John McTernan. Post-war Iraq has suffered 13 years of violence. Nearly 300 people killed by ISIL in Baghdad last weekend alone. The same ISIL that even Tony Blair has now conceded is a byproduct of the invasion. Shouldn't we therefore see more contrition? from supporters of the war, and yet you seem more defiant uh, than you seem contrite, even with ISIL reminding us every week of what a disaster the Iraq intervention was. ISIS remind us every week that terrorists who are killers are moral agents. Nothing, nothing uh, can take away from them their responsibility for every single murder that they kill. The Iraq war is not responsible? Every single murder. The Iraq war is not responsible for no, giving us ISIS. No, no, you, Tony you, Blair you, can, said you that. cannot tell me. Well, Tony Blair you has said you that, John. Your, your former boss no, has said there are elements of truth in the argument. Sorry, that you're, talk, you're talking to me. Yes. You're talking to me. Okay, so you disagree you're with Blair. To me. And I'm asking let, you, do you disagree let, with Blair? Let, let, let's be ab it's a simple question. Do you I'm agree with you, Tony I'm Blair? Absolutely clear. I'm, 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 ab yeah, I'm absolutely clear about this, which is that terrorists are responsible for the murders that they commit. Nobody else is responsible. They can't say a big boy did it and he ran away or a big boy made me do it. They are killing Iraqis themselves. Agreed. But did they the Iraq should, war play any role and they in, be in giving ISIS that space to exist, to kill, to exploit instability and chaos? Because Tony Blair has conceded that there is truth and in the that And the head argument. of MI5, the head, the head of MI5, the intelligence agency in Britain, gave evidence to Chilcot, is quoted in the report, saying that she and her agency predicted in advance that an invasion would lead to a growth of terrorism coming out of Britain as well as internationally. The warnings were made. ISIS didn't exist before. Of course, each person who kills another person is responsible, but creating the conditions that generate this kind of behaviour is also John, a responsibility. John, do you want to respond to that? A very big responsibility. In my, look, in, in, yeah, in, my, in, in, my, in my view, uh, the, 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 the biggest blow recently to Iraqi security is the cowardice of David Cameron and of uh, Gordon Brown and of President Obama in deciding to cut and run, not to stay, not to stay and support the Iraqi security services, not to fin finish the work of the surge, not to complete the rebuilding of the army, not to complete the building of the police forces and the security services. And I think that's the disgrace, the betrayal. The Americans uh, wanted of to the retain US a base and the, UK, and the Iraqis who did not, who them. did, who did, who did the, <laughs> the U.S. and the U.K. did not want to have did not have the strategic patience that's required uh, to rebuild a nation. John, that's John let me ask you this. Destroyed, not by the war, but by dictatorship, okay. by that fascist. Let me ask please, you. the Americans uh, wanted the civil, to the remain. Civil society institutions. Uh, and, and the Iraqi government that was put in place by the occupying powers said no. John McTernan, you worked with Tony Blair after the war. You've stayed in touch with him since. Give us your insight into his mind. Uh, we know from the Chilcot report that he told Bush in secret that I will be with you whatever eight months before the war. OK. And we know what that phrase was a reference to. It was a reference to the events ten months before that memo was written. The, the reference was, as you know, to 9-11. And Tony Blair, in that memo, was expressing the view of every single citizen of the United Kingdom that we stood shoulder to shoulder in solidarity with America and Americans. Uh, Come on, John. That memo was about Iraq. On America. It was a very specific. I don't think it George was not, Bush that read that. that, that, that the memo was that, about Iraq. The very next sentence is about that Iraq. That memo. That was clear. That was a clear. That was a. That was a clear expression of the solidarity which all British people had at the time with America about uh, the worst ever uh, domestic terrorism inflicted. In Most America. people who have read that memo, politicians, journalists, the Chilcot Committee, have come to pretty yeah, much one me, conclusion. Know, it's basically you, sure. Tony Blair, and maybe seven people think that didn't mean a blank no, check for war. Tony, no, no, come on. Come man, on, no, John. No, man, I'm you, with you, you whatever. You, know, you OK, you, you know, Claire knows, everybody watching this programme knows, there was a vote in the House of Commons, a vote. 
a free vote in the House of Commons to on whether Britain should go to war. Let me ask you so this, John. You Let me ask you this, John. Do you think you can't that free give vote... a blank check if you're going okay. to have a vote in the House of Commons? Here's a question. Do you think, if we had a time machine, do you really think that House of Commons vote would have been won had those MPs read the Chilcot report before they voted? Come on, honestly, John. Do you really not. think they would have won, won that? They, no chance. They, but that, that's just a, I mean, that's just a ridiculous thought experiment. Well, they, it's they, saying they, they, had had more, Commons, they would have had like more information cabinet, than they had. Made the decision. Well, they, but you're, no, you're saying that if they, you're not saying they have a time machine, they'd have, they'd have the vision of the future. Right. Well, they would, John Chilcott's they, point is it's not about the future, it's, it's about what's already won. I, w I, won't, I, won't, I, won't do a I won't I won't vote now on this thing, which may have these consequences in the future, which I now know but about. But he was warned come, about the consequences. The that's the whole me. point, John. Ridonkulous. Claire, let me ask you this Ridonkulous. before we finish. Well, he was warned about the consequences. That's what the Chilcott report says. I you know see, you don't, I know you don't agree now, with it. Please, let me say on, this. The, the, the thing about deceit or people being misled is actually crucial to the vote in the House of Commons. Lots of people voted on explanations that were not true about the nature of the legal advice, about the Blix process, about an imminent threat, about what the French position really was, and so on. So, yes, there was... The, and also, and there was a massive arms twisting and calls to loyalty and all the rest of it, but people voted on a false pr prospectus, to use Ming Campbell's phrase. People voted believing what Tony was saying, and now the Chilcot report says that was not the true picture. Final question to you both. Uh, you bo Claire, you supported the war and then changed your mind or you, you resigned later. Uh, John McTernan, you supported it, still support it. Putting aside all the political arguments, all the claims, counterclaims, Chilcot, etc. Iraq uh, is, a, is a mess. Uh, hundreds of thousands of people have died. People still continue to be killed. Um, how much do those deaths uh, weigh on your consciences at all? Uh, John first, then Claire. Every single death uh, in Iraq, uh, whether it was in, in the war, whether it's at the hands of terrorists, is a, is, is a loss, to, not just to the, uh, to the families of the, of the deceased, but also to their communities and to the country as a whole. Of course, all that loss of life is to be regretted. But in the balance, I cannot regret that Saddam Hussein, a genocidal fascist dictator who was killing his own people uh, unchallenged uh, before, that, that he was uh, removed from power in Iraq. Claire Short, final word? Yes, terrible regret. And I think people right across Britain hang their head in shame and feel deeply upset about what's happened. And then, of course, there's the 179 families in Britain who say, who've lost soldiers um, during the war who say, of course, if you go into the military, you may take that risk. But if the cause was ignoble, then it twists the knife in the wound because they're their loved ones died for something that was wrong. So, yes, deep regret, terrible. No one can put it right, but the whole of the country virtually is, is full of sorrow and regret. Thanks both for joining me on Upfront.